happy Saturday. Just getting my, my words and my vocal power here. I say that because without coffee, I, I'm speechless. My word finding ability is limited. Good morning. Uh, as you can tell from the title and thumbnail, I've got a little Saturday morning product review for you guys. A set of products that you've actually asked me to talk about in other videos. But those of you who have been watching me for any period of time, you kind of already know the gist of it. But I have a few points that I want to make. Um, the products are the sugar, sugar, fre fresh sugar, sugar fresh, fresh beauty, <laughs> sugar, sugar, sugar. How many times can I say sugar without actually telling you what I'm going to be talking about? They're lip products. Um, I'm going to be talking about these. These are products that I got on Octoly. I applied uh, to review these products on the Octoly platform and was accepted. So you should know that I was gifted these products from Fresh Beauty in exchange for this review, but this is in no way an advertisement, but you should know that I didn't actually pay for these. They were gifted to me uh, with, the, with the stipulation that I would review them. And um, so, all right, what do we have here? First up is, their sugar lip polish. Now Fresh is a company, their skincare products all are laden with fragrance and so I don't recommend them unfortunately because you know when you use fragrance on your skin, even if you don't have a problem with it, even if you enjoy it, you are, the fragrance is co-sensitizing, meaning your immune system looks at that and decides like, it wants to stir up trouble and it can make it so that other ingredients in your products you uh, are more at risk for developing an allergy to. It can just cause problems, vasodilation. I mean, insidious things that you're not aware of. Um, it's kind of like the hypertension of dermatology. Hypertension is, a, is like a huge problem. And people have no idea that their blood pressure is, is creeping up because it's just something they're not, they're, you know, they go through life blithely unaware of and all of a sudden they're, they're hypertensive and, and whatnot. So I, I feel as though fragrance is, I mean, that's a bit of a hyperbole, but fragrance is one of those insidious things that people are just not as aware of how how problematic it can be. Anyways, uh, so all the products have fragrance, including the lip products. But the first thing is the Sugar Lip Polish. Now, this is a product that's intended to exfoliate the lips. I think people really um, are motivated to use things like this when they're experiencing really dry, cracked lips. So exfoliating the lips can A, feel nice, and it really can help. I mean, you have like a big chunk of, of, of desquamating skin on the lip that's just like not coming off and whatnot. Some gentle exfoliation can help in removing that and just helping in the healing of your lips. But you have to be really careful that you're not doing it too frequently because when you exfoliate the lips, whether it be mechanically or you know using some other kind of lip exfoliant, uh, really what that can do is pull out a lot of water out of your skin. It can be very irritating and, and it can actually make your chapped lip situation a lot worse. Not only that, if you use exfoliating products like this that have fragrance in them, uh, as you're, as you're putting that little mechanical irritation on the skin, you're also depositing fragrance into the skin that your lips can then react to. I do like the idea of using sugar to, as a mechanical exfoliant on the lips. Um, I personally have used things like that on my heels uh, because sugar is actually a humectant and just the particles are abrasive so they can help in removing, you know, exfoliating some built up skin. Uh, so if you got really chapped lips where you've got like, stuck on stuff, like chapped, you know what I'm talking about, where um, it's like the skin is just kind of heaped up and stuck on there. It's not just like desquamating off. And by desquamating, I mean just naturally coming off. It needs a little bit of assistance. Okay, like there's a case for a little bit of a gentle mechanical exfoliation. You can actually achieve that just with a washcloth. But sugar is um, not a bad choice either because it is a humectant, so it can help in kind of holding water on the skin. And so if you want to do, you know, doing something like that um, here and there is not necessarily bad, but, it, you know, you don't want to be doing it too frequently is what I'm getting at. And you don't want to be doing it alongside, alongside fragrancy ingredients. This has some nice oils in it that are um, nice emollients. It has jojoba oil in it. You know, you could dupe this really easily by just doing, getting a little bit of jojoba oil from Trader Joe's. Um, and a packet of that um, turbinado sugar, sugar in the raw, because the 
the um, crystal, the, the sugar crystals are kind of a coarser grain than just granulated sugar. And you could easily dupe this and not have the fragrance in there. The They list fragrance in the ingredient list. And then they also list limonene and citral. Those are both fragrance. Uh, as is benzyl alcohol, the last ingredient. Um, okay, I mentioned the jojoba seed oil and I mentioned the shea butter and the grape seed oil. The other thing, unfortunately, in this um, that can also be a problem is castor oil. People develop allergies to castor oil. Um, and so if you become sensitized to castor oil, this would be a no-go for you. Um, and the risk of having that occur is greater because this has fragrance in it. Um, that just makes it more likely that you could develop a problem to the castor oil. Um, in addition to sucrose, this has molasses in it, maybe kind of why it's sort of sticky. Um, yeah, I, I actually enjoy using this. I, and you know, it definitely does leave your lips feeling soft. Um, another way to use this or to make your own little sugar scrub where it's, it's useful to use is like on your heels or on your hands. It can just really help in softening your hands before you put moisturizer on. Um, just don't, just don't, you just don't wanna do things like that too frequently because you can end up irritating your skin and drying out your skin quite a bit. But sugar is a humectant and uh, you know, you can use just a, a plain oil uh, to, you know, add a little emolliation. Jojoba oil I think is a good choice. Um, or even squalane oil. I know a lot of you guys use squalane oil in your skincare. Uh, this is a simple thing that you can do and you don't necessarily need an expensive product like this that puts you at risk for fragrance allergy. Now the sugar advanced therapy um, lip treatment is basically a lip balm and I kind of enjoyed using this but it has a few potentially problematic things. Obviously fragrance, so that's a no-go. Um, but it also has olive oil in it. Olive oil is has actually been shown when left on your skin as a moisturizer, it actually has been shown to increase trans, what's called transepidermal water loss, meaning loss of water out of your skin. It's really popular as a natural moisturizing ingredient. Like in Europe, I know it, it's been very popular for many years uh, in, baby, in, in newborn babies to use olive oil. And that was actually where that study came from. They were actually, they actually decided to take a look to see like, is this actually a good moisturizer? And turns out it's not. Um, and in that study, they showed that sunflower seed oil on the other hand was. And so that would be a better choice in other words, um, to olive oil. But anyways, <laughs> this product has olive oil in it. So that could increase the rate of water loss out of, out of your lips. And you're not really gonna appreciate that immediately because olive oil is an emollient. So it's gonna soften the lips, it's gonna smooth things out. But then later on, after, after it's been on your skin for a while, you're gonna start losing water out of, out of the lips. They're gonna become dry and cracked. And you may also wanna lick your lips because I believe this has a flavorant in it. Yeah, you're also gonna to wanna to lick your lips because this has a flavorant in it, vanillin. Now vanillin is in the same category of offensive of offenders as fragrance. It's one of the most common causes of contact chelitis in lip care products. Flavorants and fragrance, vanilla in is a flavorant. And it tastes good, You're gonna, you might accidentally lick it off. And when you lick the lips, the saliva deposits on the skin of the lips pulls and, and then evaporates and pulls more water out of your lips, plus that olive oil in there. So what I'm getting at is that it, immediately you're gonna get you're gonna get satisfaction from using a product like this. And then maybe an hour or so, half an hour, hour later, uh, your lips are gonna feel dry again and you're gonna come right back to the source of the problem and put it back on. And so that's why products like this are popular because they give immediate, immediate satisfaction, but they kind of keep you coming back for reasons that are not necessarily good for your lips. This product, the other thing I liked about this and I did appreciate effects with um, is that it has a licorice root extract in it which can actually brighten up the skin of the lips. So I did notice a little bit of a glowy, uh, almost brightening look to my lips when using this. But another product on the market that I found that to be the case with is from, from Drunk Elephant. It's a Drunk Elephant Lippy Balm. One of my favorite products actually from that brand is their lip balm. 
Their lip balm has a nice brightening effect to it. It also has peptides in it, which kind of can help hydrate up the skin. And I actually, I actually prefer that to this. It doesn't have fragrance in it. It does, however, have coconut oil in it, which is not a devil thing. It's actually a good moisturizing ingredient. But for some people, it can flare their acne. So if you're coping with acne around your mouth, that might not be a good choice for you. But that one I found, I find gives really a really nice brightening kind of effect to the lips for a cosmetic you know, kind of, it gives a nice cosmesis in other words. And I also found that I kept my lips softened and was nice. You know my standby go-to just lip balm is CeraVe Healing Ointment. That too has the peptides in it. It doesn't have a, a skin brightening ingredient, but that I really find plumps the lips up, hydrates them, seals in trans, you know, prevents trans epidermal water loss and, and leads to when I use that, which I do, you know, daily, leads to uh, sustained hydration of the lips, not this, this short-term subacute hydration. But I can see, you know, and using these products, you guys, I enjoy trying these things out because I want to get kind of the consumer experience too to understand like what it is that keeps people buying these things. You know, it can't just be the fact that they smell good and have fragrance in them. Like, is there something of merit that people are, that people really enjoy about them? Because I, you know, I have, I'll have patients who are using things like this who come in with aculitis. I have to tell them to stop. And, you know, it's hard to convince people to stop things like this. And uh, you know, so it's nice to be able to have experienced the product myself, understand like what it is people enjoy about it, and then try and be able to offer, to be able to offer an alternative to it that is less likely to cause problems for them. Okay, moving along the train, the last product from the uh, Sugar, Sugar Beauty, is that what's called? Fresh Beauty is their tinted lip treatment. This is the color rose. Um, this actually has a low SPF of 15 in it, which will protect your lips. I love that. Um, unfortunately, the sunscreen ingredient in this is, uh, what is it? Octinoxate. Now that's only gonna protect your lips from UVB. UVB is the part of ultraviolet radiation that will burn your skin. So that's, that's an, uh, an ingredient that protects against that, but it doesn't protect against the rays that penetrate more deeply into your skin, including the skin of your lips and degrade collagen um, and contribute to both UVB and UVA actually will contribute to hyperpigmentation. So I know a lot of you suffer with hyperpigmentation on the lips that you're trying to correct. But uh, yeah, if you're, if you're trying to improve that, protecting the skin from the lips, whatever the reason for the hyperpigmentation, protecting the skin from ultraviolet radiation is really important. Both UVB actually and UVA, but you know, maybe more so UVA. This doesn't offer that protection that you need for, for skin brightening. This looks nice. The tint is really, really subtle. I don't know if it's just this rose color. It definitely has, does this one also have vanilla in it? Vanilla in, in it too? I think it does, because there's definitely a little taste to it. Like it's really subtle. I actually, this is the kind of lip tint that I appreciate because it's not like the kind of thing that gets on my teeth or like starts to do weird things. I can't handle that. That's why I don't wear, I can't stand wearing lipstick. It just drives me nuts. Um, all right, the last issue, in addition to obviously fragrance and it being inadequate lip SPF, the other issue with the sugar, uh, fre the fresh sugar product is that uh, it has red dyes in it. Now, I mentioned how coconut oil can be comedogenic. Red dyes also can be. They're derived from coal tar. Coal tar itself is comedogenic. And so we think that that's why uh, red dyes can cause can cause you know people's acne to flare, particularly in blush. They're, they often can be a problem uh, causing uh, acne on the cheeks. But you know, obviously in lip products too, it's gonna to be an issue. Now, the alternative to red dyes is gonna be carmine, which I have a video on, in which I, <laughs> I terrified you against carmine, all the crushed up bugs and immediate hypersensitivity and death and whatnot. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's, that's an option, carmine, um, or um, just iron oxides. So uh, you guys, a product that, you know, I really have had a hard time finding lip, uh, lip tints, lipstick type products to recommend to you guys that don't have those two ingredients. But 
I can't believe this. Claire, clear. I keep saying this, Claire, but it's clear. They have a tinted lip balm, you guys, that doesn't have red dyes in it. It just has iron oxide and titanium dioxide. Now, it's not, it's not an SPF, but uh, it, it does have a nice tint to it. It has squalane oil in it, which is a nice emollient. And, oh, the other thing, it doesn't have beeswax. Now, beeswax you'll find in a lot of lip balms, including these sugar ones, and people can definitely become allergic to that. And it's obviously not a vegan ingredient. Um, and so, you know, you, you're probably, you know, looking for something that is free of that. This doesn't have that. This is vegan. Um, it has another type of wax, which doesn't, doesn't cause issues, Candela, Candelia wax. It also has cocoa butter and shea butter, if I didn't already mention that. The one ingredient in this that people can become allergic to, but you'll be hard pressed to find a skincare product free of it, is tocopherol, vitamin E. Uh, vitamin E sensitivity can happen. Uh, tocopherol is added as an antioxidant to help protect the in ingredients in the product. And it's at a concentration that tends to not be sensitized. And where people can really become sensitized to vitamin E is when they open up those little capsules and apply it directly to the skin. Uh, that's, that's a, especially if you're applying it on a cut, which people often do, that's a setup right there for developing a sensitivity to vitamin E, in which case you gotta avoid tocopherol. But, you know, and that's hard. Um, so what I'm saying is it's fine, but just be aware of that. As always, as always a potential potential problem for people. This is a really low risk product. Yeah, it actually looks nice. Um, so I'm gonna put it on right here. The only thing I don't like about it though, I mean, I'm not a lipstick wearer. Maybe this is something you guys are more comfortable with. Is this packaging, like the, the shape, I find it's a little difficult to put on. Uh, But it's it's actually a darker a darker stain a darker tint. So if you're going for more of a lipstick, give this a try. It's really good. Now it doesn't have SPF in it, so it's not going to protect your the skin of your lips uh, from the sun. Another reason, as a side note, to protect your skin from the sun is obviously skin cancers on the lip do occur really common. And trust me, you don't wanna to have to go through the treatment of one of those. It is misery, uh, really miserable to go through that. If you have to have surgery, reconstructing the lip area, not easy because you can imagine like, uh, you know, your lips have key, a key function in, in the shape of your mouth and whatnot and speech. So yeah, um, protect your skin from the sun because of skin cancer. But also if you have cold sores, um, related to the herpes virus. Sun exposure is a key trigger for an outbreak, uh, ultraviolet radiation. So using an SPF lip balm, if you suffer from those little cold sores, definitely is recommended to reduce the number of flares that you experience. All right, but the clear one does not have sunscreen in it. So it looks really nice to put that on and let it set up and then layer over it the Vanny Cream Lip SPF. I'll link it down below for you guys. That is a mineral sunscreen, which unlike the sugar product, will protect against both UVB and UVA. Free of added fragrance, I love it. I've raved about it in my lip SPF videos and you know, you've seen me wear it a bazillion times. It changes the coloration of your lips on its own a little bit to a subtle pink glowiness, but layered over this, you know, I'm not a makeup person, so take that with a grain of salt, but I think you might be pleasantly pleased with the way that it looks, and it's a much safer alternative for you. But another product that I like for the lips is um, Tizo makes this product, T-I-Tizo, Tizo, Tizo. And Coats, C-O-T-Z, makes a carbon copy of the same product. This is a tinted lip SPF. So this is like an all-in-one. It's not a pinky color, it's more of a brownie kind of color. So, and it kind of goes on with like almost a sort of sheer, sheer coloration. It's not really like, it's not really like a lip stain like this. Um, but that tint is nice because it protects, it's tinted with what's called iron oxides, 
that those iron oxides, in addition to zinc and titanium dioxide, will protect your skin of your lips from pro-pigmenting wavelengths of visible light. So you're getting ultraviolet, UVR, UV radiation protection, and you're getting visible light protection. Really a great choice if you have hyperpigmented lips that you're trying to improve the appearance of, this is a good choice for sure because you really get good protection. The clear lip stain, I'm calling it a lip stain, uh, lip balm, the clear lip balm. Now it's not a it's not an SPF. This is not gonna protect your the skin of your lips sufficiently from ultraviolet radiation, but it does have iron oxides in it. So you, using a product like this will protect your lips modestly to pro-pigmenting wavelengths of visible light. So, you know, stacking this with the with the Vanny Cream and Mineral SPF or using this product, that's a really good way to, to tackle the hyperpigmentation issue on, on the lips. So yeah, that's my review of the sugar products. I actually enjoyed using them, but again, fragrance and lip products set up for contact, what's called contact chelitis, set up for co-sensitivities. Then the vanilla in, the flavor, it's something you're gonna lick off and can also be sensitizing. But hey, the scrub thing is something you can easily DIY at home if you find that's beneficial and kind of helping soften really bad chapped lips. Just don't go overboard with it. Simple recipe, just a little jojoba oil I'd mixed with a packet of uh, sugar in the raw. <laughs> you can get at any uh, any coffee shop. Um, so yeah, much easier um, and you know more affordable. So these products were fun. I, you, many of you guys have asked me to review Fresh. I mean, those of you who have watched me for a while, you kind of stop asking that once you realize like I'm basically not gonna recommend anything from the brand. But I actually personally enjoyed using these. I Basically, I appreciate and understand why consumers like these products. So that's helpful to me. So yeah, you know, so fresh and so clean. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys. So I put Margo in her new February dress. This is one that my mom got me on Etsy for um, Christmas. It's her little Valentine dress. How cute is the little the little flower heart, and then I just love the the uh, kind of frayed edge. But I got these little leggings on Etsy in the color purple, and I just spent this morning like an hour trying to put them on. They're really hard to get on. Um, but I have her in just like stocking feet right now because her boots don't really match this outfit, so I think she needs new shoes. Um, see, she's more fashionable than me. Her wardrobe is more extensive than mine. This is my Blythe doll, if you're not familiar. Oops, let me grab her in the torso. Yeah, her eyes change color. So yeah, she's looking, she's looking February ready. But you all, I have a book update for you guys. I've been reading this book and I love it. It's called Cloud Splitter. It's by Russell Banks. He wrote a book called The Sweet Hereafter, which I've never read. Comment below on if you've read that book or any other books by this author. But this is a, such an, a, a great read. It's about um, an abol abolitionist. Yeah, it's, it's a story told um, through the eyes of the son of uh, John Brown. And he's, tell he's telling this story about um, his experience interacting with um, this woman that they were helping. And it's just interesting, you know, growing up you take history and you know that these dark things are unfortunately part of our history. Uh, but hearing this historical recounting of how people are affected by those things, it's just really interesting. It makes you think about things in another way. It's a good read, I recommend it. I think you guys will enjoy it, many of you. Um, it's well written and there are parts that are somewhat comedic. Uh, so, you know, you have some com comedic relief in there amongst many serious issues, but I'm enjoying it a lot. Um, I started it this week, so yeah, I've been, I've been enjoying that. I got that at half price books. Hey, little boy. Oh. <laughs> You want a throwsy? Well, hey 
guys, I'm over here at my mom's house just making a, another coffee. It's actually my second one of the day. I usually have two cups of coffee a day. Sometimes only one though, depending on time. And on the weekends I tend to have more time for slurping. So that's what I'm doing. My mom is, I think she just went in the bathroom. Just have one of these Bustillo instant coffees. They're handy in a pinch. I don't have any of my Four Siggy instant coffees over here, but yeah, the Stella ones are pretty good. Stella is one of my favorite espressos. I just got some new espresso from Crohair by Javalia. I love Javalia and Bastillo. Those are my faves. But uh, yeah, because I've been on the French press game as of lately a lot, and I haven't been doing my Bialetti. So I got some more espresso for the Bialetti. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Did you have a good Saturday. week? <laughs> yeah, I had a good week. Um, Tell everybody little, about your new neighbor. A little cold. Oh, I wish we could go out and take a picture of him, but he's not there right now. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there was a little owl that took up residence out in my hallway. He was up on top of the sprinkler. Um, it's, it was weird. It's like a little baby barn owl. Yeah, rice you. <laughs> Where? Look what he did, you guys. He wants me to throw his little squeaky. He puts it right, right next to my foot so that I'll step on it. That's the game. You have to throw it. You started uh, reading Bear Town. I just started it. Today. Oh, I enjoyed that book a lot by Frederick Bachman. Yeah, I recommend that if you guys are in the market for a good read. That and the book I'm currently reading, Cloud Splitter, is a, is a win. I've read some good books this year. Or as of the past few months. I I finished Unsheltered by Barbara Kingsolver. It was good, but it's definitely not the best book that I've read, um, particularly recently. You know when you read two really good books back to back and then the third one's good, but not, it doesn't, you know, it's just underwhelming. It's a bit of a letdown. That's how Unsheltered was for me. Especially since I like Barbara Kingsolver so much. <laughs> Tybee. Well guys, I'm gonna wrap up the vlog here because I've been blabbing for a long time. It's getting late. I hope you all enjoyed it and I hope you enjoyed my fresh beauty review of the lip balms and what have you, the sugar scrub. Comment below and if you do your own little DIY sugar scrub. But if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen, sunscreen and, subscribe. and subscribe. I'll talk Bye. to you guys tomorrow. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.